Hello everyone, my name is Pixel Riffs and welcome back to Pixar. How are you guys doing? You may think I am riding this Triceratops. Nope. Chuck Tester. No, this is this is actually Chuck Tester would be a great name for a Triceratops. I might actually do that. You guys remember Chuck Tester? That was a thing back in the day. Anyway, uh, I'm I'm currently taming a trike and I've been using Citronelle to tame this thing the entire time, but it says I got a quest. I got a quest from one of the quest bots in my mountain forest that was like, tame a trike with purple berries. I thought that is going to take a while. So let me feed it a purple berry as the last thing. No, don't go in the water. <laughs> don't go in the water. Oh gosh, this, hopefully it won't go too far, too deep into the water. But I came out to this novice grassland at the top of the map to tame myself a trike using citronelles because a lot of the trikes around the central novice grasslands were either low level or they were stuck on things. So I decided I would find a decent level trike, something around level 50. I found this level 52 guy. He's looking pretty great. But yeah, I couldn't tame him all the way with purple berries. There we go. We nailed it. We got the quest. Fantastic. This is going to be Chuck Tester. <laughs> I have no idea why I'm naming a Triceratops Chuck Tester, but that's, that's what's going down at the start of today's episode. So I hope you guys are enjoying this Pixar series. It is here to stay as far as I'm concerned. People are people seem to be having a decent time on this server. K83 is streaming from the server uh, occasionally and getting the entire tribe of folks killed by dinos. <laughs> Awuga dropped by the other day and got the Raiding Ruins 101 lesson from me as well. So if you guys if you guys want to go check out Awuga's episodes for a little bit more action from me, it's not I mean, it's not going to be included in this episode simply because I will, I will just be, like, teaching the same people the same stuff or different people the same stuff over and over again for a while, and I don't want that to get boring for you guys. So instead, I'm going to be making cameos in other people's episodes here and there, but they won't necessarily pop up in my video, so, uh, so don't worry yourselves about that. Staying pretty active on the server, helping some people out with some stuff, and trying not to get myself killed all that often, which is a little bit of a challenge when most of what we've got up here at the top of the map is frozen biomes, and dark realms and things, dark forests. It's it's a little bit hairy up here. But most of the uh, the western side of the map over in this direction is grassland. So that's where we're going to be touching down temporarily just to get our bearings and figure out what's what. So as you can see, I am currently level 55. So doing pretty well in the leveling department. I've basically... Oh, hi. Hi there. <laughs> hi, friend. Get speared. Whack. The... Objective right now has just been to get myself a ton of executive blueprints for my my base, for my mountain forest skyscraper project. About that, though, I have a feeling that the executive blueprints are basically the hardest ones to find in this game. They are very few and far between. I've been checking out some of these loot drops and stuff to see if they occasionally have what I need, but it is... It is rare, and let me just swim out here and make sure that no Mega Piranha are going to attack me or something while I'm looking at this. Yeah, Thorny Ball Saddle, that's cool, I'll take it. Uh, Fire Magic Stone Essence, sure, I will take that as well. Hopefully Charlie will still be able to carry me after I'm carrying all of this stuff. But my, my weight limit is now much higher than that of my Pteranodon, so I've got to be careful about this stuff. But yeah, anyway, I'm trying to, trying to track down a few more executive blueprints. I have stumbled on a couple of Dilo ruins, so I'm starting to get Mediterranean blueprints as well, but executive-style stuff is still evading me. So I reckon what I'm probably going to do is start making stuff out of marble instead, because marble still looks pretty good. I've got a little bit of marble wall on the go. I still need to gather a ton of marble if we're going to be making the majority of the build out of stuff like that. We could also go with the strategy of painting stuff. So maybe I could find some grey berries or just use white berries and paint some of the blocks that we can gather pretty easily. But for the most part, I'm going to start making it out of regular materials until such time as I can find the executive style blueprints I want, which is probably going to be a long task. It's, <laughs> it's taken me this long just to come to the realization that it's not gonna be as easy as all that but thankfully we have plenty of other stuff we can occupy ourselves with in the meantime plenty of lovely high level pteranodons flying around this here novice grassland is actually uh, it's actually a regular grassland is is where some people have started to set up i think kane and awuga's bases are over here there is also a hydra's worth of sauropods which are just kind of hanging out in and around this uh taming pen i think that's what i think that's what kane and woogie have been calling it i don't know if they're really going to be taming any sauropods right now but hey 
at least these guys are getting some exercise, <laughs> right? So let me touch down here for a second before we fly around the corner back to spawn and then through our portal to the the mountain forest. But yeah, things are going pretty well. Things are going all right on the server. Occasionally people get killed by direwolves, but for the most part, people are settling in. People are learning some new stuff. I'm going to occasionally do a single player episode. Like I think this is probably going to be a single player episode unless somebody gets in touch tonight and says, hey, do you want to record some stuff? But for the most part, I'm going to try and get more collaborative content into these videos a little bit more collaborative stuff than I was going to have otherwise in my single player world by myself. I figure that's the point of having a server like this anyway, is to have people pop up in videos and help out with stuff, do some raiding together, that kind of thing. So make sure you check out the other guys because I'm sure they will be collaborating too. And it's going to be exciting to see how people pair off in these videos and, and, and what they get up to. I'm def definitely going to be keeping track of what my server mates are up to, but you'll see them from time to time in my videos as well. And there is a purple beacon out here and I desperately want this to not be in a dark forest biome or something like that because <laughs> whenever I see these things drop, they're always in a biome that is pretty much the most dangerous place. Like I, I always see them in the, the frozen biomes or the dark forests, places that I don't really trust myself to go right now because I don't have the proper equipment. What are we flying up to here? Yeah, that's looking like a dark forest to me. Hello? Has it completely dropped yet? No, it's still all the way up there. And that's looking like mm, maybe ocean near Dark Forest. Kind of around here. Okay. That might be accessible. I do just want to touch down over here. If I could build a raft or something, that would be ideal. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that from this island. I don't think I have enough wood on me. Let's find out. What do we need to build a raft, right? Yeah, it's clear I do not have a great deal of stuff right now. Raft needs... Okay, yeah, I would need a ton of stuff. Okay, not to worry. I might actually bring a raft around with me if I'm looking to collect a few more of these blueprints and stuff from from the loot drops up there because yeah we will we will need to we'll need to start exploring some of these stuff we, we, we're going to try and get as many loot drops and stuff as we can because those will contain stuff that we can't otherwise get in loot chests and it's just going to be another uh, another opportunity to do that while waiting for the chests to respawn so i'm going to try and go for this despite the fact that there are mantas around the place if necessary i can maybe fly charlie over there and then land somewhere nearby, swim out to it, and hope I don't get killed. That seems like a viable strategy, question mark. We will see. Actually, thinking about it, if that contains anything heavy, Charlie's not going to be able to carry me. Maybe I will I will try and... I'll nip over to the mountain forest, and then I'll come back. How about that? We'll give it a try. <laughs> okay, because I'm an idiot, I'm going to try and do this without a raft. This could be the end of me, <laughs> but we will see. What level do I have to be to open one of these? Is it going to tell me... Of course, it's not going to tell me until I get closer. There's puffer fish. There's a uh, mega piranha. I think we're going to be okay. Access inventory. Oh, we're standing on the wing. Oh, it's got a blueprint in it. Oh, fantastic. Okay, I think that's that's only a Mediterranean fence blueprint. Charlie, Charlie, come down. Come down closer. Oh, gosh. Okay, this isn't going to be good. We need to get a little bit of distance so Charlie starts following me. Okay, good, good. Yes, okay, we made it. Oh, I just saw something. I just saw something come at me. I think that was only a mega piranha, but we nailed it. Let's take a look at what we got right there. What do we have? For a start, I've, I've started getting iron spears, which is pretty cool. I might pass those on to some of my tribe mates because I've got an ice spear already, but iron spears are good too. Mediterranean fence blueprint. I will take it. Maybe we can end up using some of that for balconies and things. I think I got a little bit of polymer from that as well, did I? I think I picked up a couple of things like that, maybe a couple of arrows or bullets or something like that. A few of these fire bullets and ice bullets and stuff seem to have come into my inventory from either that or the ruins. That all happened so fast. I might have to go back to look at the footage to see what I actually got there, but not bad. Okay, well, that's that was a daredevil thing that I will probably never try to do again, but at least we know we can do it. Right, so what I'm planning on doing today as well as a little bit of work on the base, is I kind of want to make this portal here safe. And maybe turn this island here into a little bit of a, like a, if not a staging area, then at least a little kind of drop-off station where if somebody comes through here and ends up dying immediately because they came through the portal, then maybe we can have like a raft out here or maybe a bed so that they can respawn there nice and easy or something like that. I don't know. We're going to work on making this portal network a little bit safer. And obviously we can't cover every single portal that's out there, but we can at least 
try and make some of these a bit more accessible. But before I do any of that to basically get this quest thing off my screen, I'm going to submit the quest and see what we get as a reward for this level 3 difficulty quest. Of course, some privilege certificates, but also a couple of neat little items there. I've been collecting health potions all over the place, <laughs> so they're kind of useful. I will keep those on me, but yeah, the quests really aren't that worthwhile. Like, I'm not going to say I'll never do one again, but so many of the ones around here have such meager rewards for what they are. Like, it barely scales up from the stuff you get in novice grasslands. So, I don't know, guys. Maybe those need to get a little bit tweaked. Maybe you just only occasionally get rare loot, but for the stuff it's asking you to do, a lot of the time, like, kill a Stegosaurus or something. I should get more than 10 privilege certificates for downing a Stegosaurus or taming a Triceratops. I feel like that's... That's a little bit of a, uh, a hard ask for very little reward. Hey, hey guys, it's me, your friend, Pixorifs. We, <laughs> we, we've, we've changed in our objectives a little bit in this episode. It is snowing, by the way, so I've got my, my snow threads on, and we're out here in the deep ocean, and I, haven't, I had a try at this. I had a try at the whole, let's cordon off this portal, let's kind of make a, make a, a, a kind of landing platform over here, something that hopefully will allow people to get out of this thing and not immediately drop into the ocean. So, oh, I'm getting too close to the island biome. I need to oh, hop onto this. There we go. Okay, deep ocean. We're nice and cool again. So it turns out you can't place blocks directly under this portal. This is not just me not being able to place blocks on the side of this, because as you can see, I can place blocks on the side of any of these ones over here. But it looks like the hitbox of the portal is kind of interfering with our ability to place blocks here, which means... Which means... Oh, is that a... An orange beacon? Okay, we need to go and get that on the raft. The raft is actually incredibly useful for picking up supply drops when they appear in the middle of the ocean, so... Shout out to the raft. Uh, but yeah, the... The portal won't let me place blocks underneath it right now, and I think... Presumably, if, if it was like a little bit higher off the surface of the water, or if we could place blocks a little bit further down, which right now we can't... It would be it would be more possible to cordon this thing off and, and make a proper kind of like landing pad for it. But the place it actually drops you out of the portal seems, if not random, then at least dictated by what direction you went into the portal on the opposite side. And sometimes I land in the water, sometimes I'm just a couple of feet up in the air. It totally depends. Oh, there it goes. It totally depends on like what angle I was flying at at the time and whether or not you press any buttons once you come through the portal, basically. Like you don't really want to be touching the keyboard until you've figured out where you are so you don't end up flying into the water. But anyway, that moves us on to what we're doing over here, if I can get the raft to swing around. So this island over here, I've started to make a bridge out of, and this started off as an experiment as to whether or not if I placed sand here, it would drop to the ocean floor because it's affected by gravity. And it does. It is the only block in Pixark that you can collect that is affected by gravity right now because you can't collect flint, which is the other thing that is affected by gravity. Flint, you just collect as like the little individual pieces of flint in your inventory. But I've started on a little land bridge out here just made out of dirt blocks now that I know that dropping sand to the ocean floor is a realistic possibility because down here there is something that was kind of the bane of my existence in my uh, in my single player series a little while ago. There is an ocean ruin down there which we can just about see in the shadows and I'm going to hop back onto this if I can just because there's megalodons and rays swimming around and I don't want to die in the middle of the ocean and lose all of the lovely stuff I've got in my inventory. So I'm going to collect this beacon if I can. I'm level like 55 now so I think maybe I should be able to. But the idea with this ocean ruin thing here is we're going to guardian farm it. We are going to collect a whole bunch of sand and hopefully maybe even enlist the help of some folks on the server to do this because it's going to be a huge project. We need to collect a ton of sand from deserts and the little islands that are around here. Requires level 70 to open. Are you kidding me? I'm only level 56 it looks like right now. So looks like we got a little bit of stuff to do. Whoa, and we're getting swung around by this thing. Yeah, so evidently it's going to take a little while longer to get those orange beacons. Not to worry, but I'm... I'm going to work on this in the meantime. I'm going to try and box this thing off. We're going to try and drop sand in from the surface so we can dig the entire thing out and explore it without the problems I was having in my single player world, which is that if you swim around 
an ocean ruin, your stamina depletes to the point where you can't really move a whole bunch anymore. And even with scuba potions, which we're not really able to make just yet, but we could probably find in a couple of dungeons, even with those scuba potions, it becomes very difficult to do anything down there. Because there are creatures spawning and all kinds of stuff, but the loot that you can get down there is very, very useful. So having one that would be accessible to us all the time, so you could just walk down there in the open air, would be very, very cool. And so to that end, I'm going to try my best to empty this thing out of water blocks completely and kind of drown the, or suffocate, I guess, the ocean monument so it's no longer underwater. So that's going to be a task that will probably take me a fair few episodes. Like, I'm not expecting to get this done during the duration of this episode because I want to get it out to you guys and this is probably going to take, like, all week of playing Pixar to do it, <laughs> along with the other stuff that I have to do in my day-to-day -day life. So... This is the start of that project, and I will try and get the other folks on board for this, but goodness knows when it's going to be finished <laughs> at this point, so don't expect that to happen anytime soon, but know that it is a project I have set in motion today. So I got further into this project than I expected to be. I've now done the perimeter, and I've started clearing out the water, and thankfully, of course, the water physics in this game are just screwy enough that this is a very, <laughs> it's a bit of a dangerous drop down there, but the, the wall of water there is being suspended by precisely nothing. There is, <laughs> there is literally nothing holding back the ocean at this point. Like, this row of stuff is just so I can get around and so I have something to place the sand blocks against. And as you can see, <laughs> the locals are having as much trouble with the water physics as I am. Apparently, well, that's, yeah, that's one way to fish, I suppose. Let's hop over here and see if we can give this Megalodon a... A swift whack on the tail. Oh, it's actually doing damage, and yep. I was wondering what exactly this would do to the creatures down here, and I guess this is our opportunity to find out. I assume, yeah, it seems to have gotten out at the bottom somewhere down there, and is uh, <laughs> probably swimming around in a state of extreme confusion. Yeah, I'm, I'm not certain if stuff is going to continue to spawn down here, or even what happens to water-based creatures in this game if they leave the water. Like, I don't know if there's any kind of mechanic by which they would start to suffocate or anything. Like, I don't know if they would have expected this to happen in the game and programmed it in. But as you can see, it's quite easy to remove the sand and placing it is not too bad either. I'm basically going along in rows and, and stripping it out like this because this is a lot of sand. Like, it's the... Oh, the bricks, though. <gasps> The bricks look so cool and shiny, but yeah, the the problem with the the sand in this game, placing the sand in the first place, is that the, the ocean floor is probably about 50 blocks down from the surface, so it's, it's kind of huge. It's deeper than I think most of the oceans in Minecraft are. So if you look at this right now, yeah, we're, we're starting to get to the, to the bottom here, but now I can start to place blocks underneath here. Oh, this is exciting, being able to actually fill up this section here. Yeah, the... The, uh, like, ground level, the kind of, the sea level, I guess, in, in this game is a, uh, like, the equivalent of Y100. So it's, it's kind of a taller section of stuff to, to manage. <laughs> it's, it's a little difficult. But, uh, yeah, it means gathering a huge amount of resources. You can't quite gather as much sand as you could in Minecraft, because in Minecraft, of course, you have the opportunity to get, like, shulker boxes full of stuff. And in this game, you're limited by the amount of stuff you can actually carry. Like, you have a weight limit. So, it's been difficult kind of ferrying all of the sand over here and not collecting, like, a huge amount of sand at once because I just can't. Like, it's, it's not physically possible for me to do that in this game. So, I'm, I'm also very scared that that Megalodon is going to appear out of here and, and take, a, take a chomp out of me. But, yeah, we've been, been slowly but surely chipping away at this. And the drill is making it a lot easier to collect all of the sand again with, without any kind of the equivalent of, like, the torch trick in Minecraft or anything like that. So, yeah, slowly but surely we are, we are making our way through this. And I'm starting to fill in some of the blocks in the, uh, the ruins itself like these that we can we can fill up with water and sooner or later we'll actually be able to go into this thing and start placing blocks inside but for now I think I'm going to keep chipping away at this doing it layer by layer and I might have a little bit of help a couple of people from the server might hop on and help me because I've been doing this for 
I'd say a couple of hours already, like in terms of in-game time, it has been maybe two or three hours just of solid resource collecting and block placing. Oh, <laughs> I got hit by that one. Oops. So uh, yeah, the, the other thing is traveling back up to the surface from down here. I kind of have to go to the, uh, the highest point I possibly can and then hop up here and hope that there's nothing around that's going to be too aggressive. But for the most part, I have not been dying much this way. The only couple of times I've died has been when I fall to the bottom of this giant trench here. Thankfully, the Mega Piranha are nice and easy to take care of now. I've got the Ice Spear, the Megalodons and Manta Rays, not so much, but, you know, we'll, we'll deal with them in due time. And we have a lot of sand here that we can just take away layer by layer and replace layer by layer and kind of 3D print our way across this until we have this entire area completely cleared out of water. So how's this for a progress update, folks? We're not doing too badly here. I've got about, I think, 14 rows of this, and there's probably, I don't know, this is maybe like a quarter of the way done. There's probably about another, I'd estimate, like 45 to 60 rows that way still yet to do, but I think this is coming along pretty well. <laughs> it's taken a long time, and hopefully we'll be able to get some other people on the server to pitch in and help with this because once this is completely dried out, we are going to have access to a bunch of really cool loot whenever we want it. And yeah, <laughs> the water physics in this game, broken as all heck, but just in case they decide to update that and all of the water just comes like flooding in at a later date, I'm probably going to build a giant wall around this made out of glass or something like that. Something that makes it a little bit obvious this area has been cleared out and, and sealed off and just so that we don't have the water rushing in on all sides. But yeah, this is <laughs> this is quite the ambitious project, but I think it's going really, really well so far. I've <laughs> been out here in the ocean probably for about, I don't know, maybe four hours worth of gameplay. It's taken quite a while to get this this much done, but it's coming along and I can't wait to have this whole thing finished and, and broken out. The ocean ruins brick is so cool looking once you don't have to look at it from from underwater and from what I can see it actually says there's a suggested tool a steel pickaxe and I've tried this on my single player world but you can't mine a whole lot of stuff underwater and obviously you run out of air you run out of stamina like using a pickaxe in this game actually decreases your stamina when you're mining blocks so it seems like this is going to take quite a while but it might be possible to obtain ocean ruins brick like one block at a time and very very slowly because of course it, it, it's like it's the most it's the toughest substance in the game if you can only move it with a steel pickaxe then obviously you could use that to troll people very effectively so obviously they want it to be it's worse than obsidian to mine it's it's longer than obsidian with like mining fatigue in minecraft <laughs> it's probably how long it takes to uh, to mine one of these blocks so it's obviously going to take a little while. We won't be able to use a great deal of it. But if I can get myself a couple of blocks of this, I will be incredibly happy. But that's going to do it for today. I think I have done as much as I possibly can. I need to get this episode out to you guys. So I figured may as well call it a day there. But I hope you guys are excited for this project because I want to see what we can do with this. This is kind of pushing the limits of what is possible in this game. So excited to see where it goes. But the, uh, the Guardian Farm Ocean Monument kind of tactic seems to be working pretty well only problem is gotta place it all by hand and that's gonna take a while so that's gonna be it for today folks thank you guys so much for watching this episode of pixark on the 2x2 server my name has been pixel riffs leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon bye for now <laughs>